Honestly, this thing's holding up better than I expected. Yes, it has to rely on reprojection, but it's still 45 FPS reprojected to 90 with zero safety settings in VR chat with a lobby of 18 on a mobile GPU. Well, since people wanted more benchmarks, and I am not a rich enough channel to afford a bunch of cards and configurations for the sole purpose of benchmarking, I thought of a way to do some more that may interest some people, and I don't think has actually been done a whole lot on YouTube. Especially not in a long while. See, I have this high-powered RTX 3080 mobile gaming laptop, the full 165 watt with a uh, power that's comparable to that of a desktop 3070, give or take a bit. Don't click off the video yet, there is still reason to be interested, even if you are uh, gaming on a desktop. I know that most people play VR, do it on desktops versus laptops, and this is not quite a one-to-one -one applicable situation, but I think it can still serve as a decent idea of uh, how something a little more upper mid-range might perform on a desktop, given how close this is to the 3070, because it doesn't thermal throttle once, and uh, you can see that in the FPS VR numbers. And also, of course, works naturally as how a high-end gaming laptop will perform. If I ever become a big enough channel, well, then I will happily buy a bunch of desktop cards to benchmark in VR. I think you know how you can help make that happen. Anyway, uh, so on to the test specs. The configuration I'll be using today is an Alienware X17 R1 laptop with an RTX 3080 165W version with an i7-11800H CPU and 32GB of 32MHz TL20 DDR4 RAM with max fans to avoid thermal throttling. You'll see the temps. This laptop also has a MUX switch to run off the DGPU, which I made sure was on, so it is not being constrained at all by Optimus. Because I want this to be a little more representative of the upper mid-range, and even a mobile 3080 is only so strong, this will be running on the popular Oculus Quest 2 at 2240 by 2256 per eye resolution instead of my Pimax AKX here. It has over three times the pixel count. Yes, I am aware that is above the base panel resolution, and what the Oculus software recommends too. The reason for this is to account for barrel distortion to explain things, in, and to explain that in brief and not get too technical, trying to make a square image and shove it into a circle results in pincushion distortion in part because of the lenses and what they do to the image, which is then counteracted by barrel distortion. SteamVR will render at around plus 30 to 50%, the HMD's uh, native panel resolution in order to account for this for a reason. I know what I'm doing. This video is also recorded in 1080p versus my usual 4K, because 4K made my laptop beg for mercy while gaming in VR. <laughs> Let's get benchmarking. Usually, I'd save the most intensive for last, but I want to start with RE8 to illustrate a couple points here. Firstly, here are the settings I am playing on. I set everything to high with ray tracing and FSR off, and then turned off the settings which mod requires disabled to function. We don't want to get too ambitious with max settings. Immediately, we are locked to 45 FPS with 50% reprojection ratio. The GPU is also being highly utilized in tax as well, with 90 to 95% usage. Even my CPU is being hit fairly hard too. While yes, it's 45 FPS, the GPU is not being overloaded trying to maintain it so the reprojection doesn't feel that terrible. If you consider this playable, depends on how tolerant you are of reprojection though. I think the ASW that the Quest 2 uses is uh, quite good when you're not overloading the GPU, that is. But I could definitely see some people having problems. However, it's not able to maintain a completely solid 45 FPS. Sometimes the GPU is getting overwhelmed and simply cannot keep that frame rate, at which point the experience does start to feel a hell of a lot worse. At its worst, when there is such as the heavy fire it's building gets burned down here, the GPU is hovering around 40 FPS, sometimes briefly dipping even lower with a truly terrible 37 though. And this happens again later on in the scene, it just can't handle above 40 with so much fire when I'm staring at it. For the majority of the scene however, it maintains 45 FPS with reprojection, so the title is playable at these settings if you can handle that. If you can't, well expect to turn on FSR and perhaps turn down settings even more. But what if open XR? The Quest 2 is not a native Steam VR headset and plenty of people have reported performance improvements when using it, right? Yeah, so as you can see right away, there's kind of something different here. Notice the complete lack of FPS VR. That's because FPS VR doesn't work well on non steam VR runtimes if you have the OpenXR set to another one. And that, well, makes it rather difficult for me to extrapolate the data. There isn't even an event log like FPS VR has. 
I used the OpenXR toolkit for this one and the Oculus Debug tool for the rest, but unfortunately, due to just showing the moment-to-moment -moment frames and not like an overlay average as detailed as FPS 3 are, it's hard for me to say an exact performance metric. However, even despite that, it still can be seen there is a performance boost here. Flashing ahead to the first fire scene, we can see that the OpenXR runtime is staying at 40 or above. It seems to be around 40-41 FPS, compared to scene VR's 37-38. This repeats during the next scene with a lot of fire. Now, it's only a couple of FPS, so that may not sound that big, but when you need to squeeze every last little bit of performance out, getting any kind of boost can be important with how demanding VR is. I'm a little hesitant to throw out exact numbers due to how much less data I get versus FPS VR, but it looks to be around 10% in this case, and that can matter when you're on the edge of your target refresh rate, as we are here. From most reports, I've seen people talk about plus 10 to 20% FPS, so just assume that when using the appropriate OpenXR runtime. I will be sticking with Steam VR and FPS VR for the sake of the video, as it gives far more data to work with, unless the game defaulted to the Oculus runtime. I did test everything I could with both runtimes that supported it though, and however, and found that results supported what people said. Please, somebody make something as detailed as FPS VR for OpenXR without needing to sacrifice the performance of it. Please. My frustrated ranting aside, next up is Half-Life Alex on the Ultra Fidelity preset with dynamic resolution disabled. If you didn't see my last benchmark video, Alex uses dynamic res to downsample itself in order to meet your target refresh rate, and we don't want that. Right away, performance is uh, pretty damn awesome. It's largely a stable 90 with a few dips, but then sometimes we do hit reprojection of 45 FPS. Overall though, the ratio of that is incredibly low, as you can see on the FPS VR graph, largely staying below 10% through the entire level. If you wish to avoid reprojection near entirely, you can easily drop a setting or two and maintain a solid 90 FPS at this resolution. Valve really optimized this game, and this is a good showcase for how even a high-end, granted, laptop can run demanding VR games at a higher resolution well. If you are willing to downsample a bit or lower settings, 120Hz mode could even be possible on the Quest 2 here. Next up is Blade and Sorcery, with the Outer Rim mod, as who doesn't like Star Wars, on the following settings. Decent settings, as I am generally trying to aim for high if possible, but we are not working with a 4090 here, and so we gotta remember the system limits. Going to Camino for a taxing map on the CPU and GPU, we can see that the Mobile 3080 is starting quite strongly at 90 FPS, and doesn't appear to be struggling at all with its low utilization, dipping into reprojection only slightly. However, if we move to another area, it can be seen that reprojection and frame drops are kicking in a bit more often. Note the frame timings, too. My CPU's frame times are generally worse than my GPU's in this situation, and the utilization is low on the GPU despite the frame drops. This would indicate a CPU bottleneck instead of a GPU one which means that 120Hz mode wouldn't quite work out in this case despite the huge GPU headroom. Although the frame timings are still good enough to reproject from 60 to 120 hertz if you prefer that instead. Still a largely playable experience even with the bottleneck, though will depend on your area and what you're doing, of course. And now we move on to a title which defaulted to the OpenXR runtime. We have Saints and Sinners running on all Mac settings. This thing is a damn buttery smooth 90 hertz without even really dipping into reprojection. There's a couple frame dips here and there, but it's really nothing bad to speak of. The game is kind of a functionally locked 90 hertz, I would say, and if you really wanted to drop some settings or use the FSR mod, I'm quite certain you could maintain a highly stable 120 FPS on the Quest 2 here. Don't pay much attention to the drops frame number because I can't seem to find a good way to stop and restart that data collection quickly like I can with FPS VR, so the game's often running while I'm getting recording started or fiddling with settings a bit. Either way, pretty impressive showing here. After such a great result, we really need to put this GPU in its place. And what better than the final boss of VR benchmarks, VR Chat. I'm running a medium settings with no AA and all safety settings turned off. Starting off in the Black Cat with a full world of 18, I'm immediately stuck at 45 FPS with reprojection and the GPU is getting some pretty high usage. If still rather spiky utilizations, ranging from 60s all the way to the 90s. Yet it is still holding pretty strong at 45 FPS. Considering the nature of VR chat, I would consider this quite a strong result as uh, good luck getting high FPS without reprojection, massive downsampling, or some really high-end card. So naturally, I decided to go to a full world of 25 at the midnight rooftop. Do, do I even need to say? <laughs> do I even need to say more? I mean, look at this. This config is getting destroyed 
on every single front. 70% reprojection ratio, less than 30 FPS, ultra high utilization, CPU being hammered to hell. I even turned things down to low for this, and this is still what happened. However, this may also legitimately be one of the few times the mobile 3080 has an edge over the desktop variant due to its 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Because look at the VRAM usage, it's getting dangerously close to being maxed out. The mobile 3080 performance is damn low, but it is consistent and it's not spiky since it's not VRAM limited. Yes, I know allocation is not utilization, but VRChat is legit one of the few gaming apps which will actually use even 24 gigabytes of it, and it is so close to being maxed out here. I have not seen that even on my 4090 where games will just black hole whatever RAM they want. Next up is Survive, a co-op zombie survival game on the high preset with no AA. Turning to face this fire here, this is the same thing which murdered even my 3090Ti, so we end up stuck in reprojection hell immediately. However, the experience is largely a very stable 90fps, uh, aside from that, and according to the performance headroom, there's quite a bit more here. I think it is only measuring the GPU though. However, we still do hit reprojection once the helicopters arrive again briefly. Honestly, you could probably run this at 120Hz mode and deal with some reprojection from the 60 for those outlier scenes like the fires and helis. I just find it crazy how well performance scales in this random indie title has also let the 4090 legitimately 2x the 3090 Ti. Moving on, we have Project Wingman on the following sayings. Yeah, it's uh, very bloody low. There's a reason for that, as while I love the game, it does not seem like it's very optimized for VR versus flat screen. Getting into the actual gameplay during Mission 11, Cold War, things are, uh, <laughs> bad. They are really goddamn bad. I am in perpetual reprojection, sometimes failing to maintain even that and hitting the low 30s. I would consider this the absolute borderline level of playable, and that's if you do not mind reprojection whatsoever. But even then, I feel like that's stretching it. There are some moments where I am at a pretty solid 45 FPS for an extended period of time, but I was still dipping below it quite often. You could expect that to happen a not insignificant amount across the game. If you mind mirror projection at all though, then the game is definitely unplayable like this. And I'm already on some low settings. There isn't too much more room to tune things as I, while I can lower textures, those are largely tied to VRAM and aren't going to hit the performance much as long as you're not VRAM limited. The FSR mod is bloody mandatory for this thing. Even Resident Evil 8 was not this merciless, since it was at least on high setting. You had room to drop them some more if you wanted to get performance. This is the worst result besides VR Chat's 25 person lobby. And that's VR Chat. After that positively brutal blowout, uh, we hit something a bit more forgiving. Here is Zero Caliber on all Ultra Sayings. And like before, some performance comments. Opening up, things are holding very strongly at 90 hertz. Very few dips or spikes during this opening fight. But approaching the house, we immediately hit reprojection hell and stay there for a while. In another section of the map, however, it goes back to 90 FPS with some dips here and there though to reprojection. But overall, this is a pretty stable experience, even with some of the spikes. However, I'd largely consider the overall gameplay experience good, and this is still an ultra saying. If you want to avoid reprojection, you have a lot of room to tone things down. If you were willing to dial down some settings since performance headroom doesn't seem very high from the debug tool, and then also resolution a bit or use the FSR mod, eh, I'm pretty sure you can manage 120Hz here quite fine. You know, assuming this isn't a CPU bound situation, as the graph doesn't tell me CPU versus GPU. I'm calm. I am very calm. So, moving on to a nice, relaxing walking game to get away from the headache no FPS VR is causing me, we have a walk in the woods. Immediately, we're in reprojection from 45 to 90 hertz. GPU utilization is also quite high and spiking up between 80s and high 90s in the open area. Likewise, this holds true once we get inside the forest proper, but it's staying at 95% or higher much more often. And sometimes the CPU is getting hammered too. For this kind of game though, this is perfectly fine. Not like you gotta start shooting in the previous game. Neat little experience. Not much else to say. Closing things out is after the fall on the falling settings. AA and shadows can be quite demanding, so I've turned AA off and shadows down a bit, and set to only two cascades. Still pretty good in high settings, however. 
Staying outside and shooting multiple hordes of zombies, things are at a lock 90 FPS with quite a significant amount of headroom. Not even 70% usage here. So, you may wonder why not dial up settings or go for 120Hz mode? Well, you could, but let's check out what happens when we go inside. I'm dropped down into reprojection, but sitting at the high 80s to low 90s on GPU utilization despite that fact. I'm even very briefly dipping below 45 FPS at one point. This is the exact same deal I had with the last time I played, since if we go to another area that's kind of inside but still a bit open, we're back at 90 hertz, even with the chunk of zombies around. So, there's some performance headroom at times. A lot of headroom. And I suppose what you do depends on what your preferences would be. Do you prefer a generally more stable 90 hertz with some 45 dips indoors at high settings, or to turn settings down to avoid reprojection? Adjust things a bit for 120 hertz with dips to 60 and perhaps even lower? Use the FSR mod? Regardless, I would generally consider After the Fall a good experience on this setup, and a little reprojection is hardly a terrible thing when it's this good. Overall, a decently strong showing. And those are the results! Honestly, not too bad overall. Uh, considering most games were running at high settings and native res, this would also be the part where I show the average graph here, but due to the lack of FPS VR in 4 out of 10 games and needing to rely on overlays with much less information than it gives, um, I think it would be hard for me to make an accurate chart, so I'm just kind of going to recap and summarize. In general, though, um, I'd say that something like this could handle the Quest 2 and the majority of games at medium to high settings. And honestly, I was expecting worse out of this. And reprojection, provided the GPU is not being overloaded and just trying to maintain the FPS, um, things seem hugely different from 45 FPS with slight headroom in RE8 to when I drop below 45. It doesn't feel too bad in that case, but that's just me. But if you can't stand heavier reprojection, um, well, you should expect to have to compromise more on resolution or settings. Um, I know what I said before, and I still would not exactly one-to-one -one extrapolate these results to a desktop card. But in GPU-bound situations that aren't VRAM limited, like VRChat, uh, this will probably give you a broad idea of what to expect from something like, say, a 3060 Ti or a 3070, give or take a little bit, of course. Um, I hope you found the benchmarks useful. Uh, let me know if you liked the video. If you stick around, uh, until next time. And if not, thanks for stopping by either way. Later.